All right, everyone. So let's uh, let's get our After Effects going. I'm going to show you the timeline in this tutorial. Uh, the tutor the timeline is down here, with this yellow boxes surrounding. And um, to really understand what's going on with the timeline, we should probably start a composition. So of course we go up to composition, new composition. Let's make this 100 frames. Hit OK. There we go. And of course a, a composition window opens up with a black screen. And uh, you can see that some of the stuff is highlighted now um, within the timeline. Let's put a layer in here so we can also better understand some things. Let's go to layer and solid. All right, cyan solid one. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine for me. All right, so you'll see here that we have one layer. Let's add another layer, in fact. Let's go to uh, text layer and we'll type in TEXT layer and that uh, font that I have there is not a standard font to be honest that is a neon font from uh, some website I can't remember what it is but somewhere um, anyway uh, you'll see that we have layers and uh, I can take one layer and drop it be below the other layer vice versa all right uh, another cool thing here within the timeline is you got these little eyeballs you can turn the layer on and off um, you can solo your layer Solid the text there. Uh, you can lock the layer, so then you can't do anything to it. You can unlock it. You can open the layer up by hitting this little arrow here. Yeah. And uh, these tags, of course, you can uh, change the color to anything you want with the tags. All right. Uh, the next one would be the number of which layer is where. So you can actually just swap those suckers out and be one, two, three, four, or whatever. Your source name or layer name, if you click this little button here, and I'll switch back and forth. Uh, this is your shy. Your shies will actually be this. Um, if you click this little guy here, and you click over here, the shy, it'll hide the layer. All right. Uh, this is your, um, well, it says for comp layer, collapse transformations for vector layer, continuous rasterize. So what this means is if you have, um, footage that's pre-composed and it's larger than what the comp you're working in it'll preserve the, um, the pixels of that comp when you're working in this comp and we'll look at that comp first or finally to uh, to deal with um, the quality of your work in this layer so when you're doing something smaller but then you're pulling you're making things bigger this will actually uh, instead of blurring pixels or distorting the pixels it actually preserve the pixels all right, so this is your quality, this is your next thing, quality wire, for, wire draft or best. This deals with the quality of, you see this, we click here, the quality of your layer. Crappy quality, good quality, crappy quality, good quality. The other thing too about this one is um, it has to deal with your frame blending. It does a great deal. Um, I've actually done some frame blending before with your time um, interpolation and stuff. And uh, just by clicking this thing, it has saved my life. In certain situations um, your next one will be your effects let's get a layer in here that actually has some footage in it so I'm going to import a file and um, let's go to my desktop projects fly guy we'll bring that sucker in here there he is and we'll just bring him down here okay so you'll see here I have a little bit of something different going on um, no effects but I do have this frame blend going on here I am going to uh, add an effect to my fly guy just so you can see what's going on. I'm going to color correct. I'm going to do a um, brightness contrast. Whoa. And of course, this little window pops open. Let me drag the sucker to where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be right here. All right. And um, we'll turn off that layer. And so the, the, there you go. I have an effect here. If I put, pull up brightness and I click this little effects button, it turns off the effect on that layer. All right. Cool. Um, let's turn my effect off. Turn my cyan layer back on. And uh, the next one will be, of course, um, frame blending. Actually, let's do let's do that real quick. If I go here, you're not going to see anything, right? There's nothing going on. This is your frame blending button over here. Fra enables frame blending on all layers. So you see, it's now blending the layer together, the frame before it, um, kind of like a simulated motion blur, but not really a motion blur. If you click motion blur, it won't do motion blur. Motion Blur deals with objects that are in the actual composition. So if I moved him, he would actually have Motion Blur to him. So if I keyframe here, keyframe there, we can do that in a second. Um, so let's turn this off. There we go. That's all off. Uh, next one would be Motion Blur. 
and then one after that would be adjustment layer. So um, the layer that is an adjustment layer affects all the layers below it. Just remember that. So whatever you do on this layer will affect the layer below it if this is selected. Okay. Uh, then the next one would be 3D. If I click on this, click on, that, on it again, um, you see that we have an X, Y, and Z axis, our axes, and this allows us to work within 3D space. Uh, then we also have next to that will be modes. And let's click on this and we can go to modes and I will do click on overlay. Now you see it's overlaying the color, soft light. These are blending modes. Um, and uh, you use this a great deal when you're working with uh, footage. Uh, a lot of the times if you have black footage that has an object in the, that's lighter than the, the background, you can use screen or add and you'll be basically adding it to, it'll like, try to ignore the the black background. A lot of cases it doesn't. You have to use a null of some sort, but screen typically works, and uh, you'll be able to, to composite something fairly simpler than just uh, rotoing. Um, anyway, let's go back to normal on this one. There we go. Um, this little button is preserve underlying transparency, of course. Um, it's kind of self explanatory. There's a tracking mat. Okay, so uh, the fun thing here is let's, let's do this real quick. If I uh, if I take this little sucker here and I do that to that and I turn on my blue layer and let's let's play with the track map. I click on alpha mat, boom. What does it do? It adds a blue layer to the text above it. It deals with that. If I do this, alpha inverted, of course it's it's looking at the layer above it. Once again, luma, luma inverted. Now here's here's the fun thing. I'm going to take the fly guy and put him here and then I'm going to go Boom, now I have a blue solid. Now I have a black. Now I have some kind of in between there. And there you go. All right, so these are some uh, interesting ways to kind of play with the tracking map. We can go to that deeper in the future. That is more of a, um, a compositing function. Um, your parent, now this little swirly thing is called a pick whip. So uh, just so you know what a pick whip is, a pick whip, uh, you can click it and drag it. Actually, let's do the reverse. Let's do the, the text will follow the fly guy. So if I do that, now you see parent has been switched to fly guy. If you click on the little icon, you can switch between the different layers. Now, if I move this fly guy layer, whoops, wrong tool. Give me one second. There we go. If I move the fly guy, the text goes with it. If I turn this off, the text doesn't go with it. So you see whatever you do to that layer will affect the other layer. It'll follow it. Um, you have your ins and your outs, uh, your duration, and your stretch. Uh, these all have to deal with uh, the footage itself. And uh, then we can go down here and check out uh, the masks. There's a mask layer here on the fly guy. Of course, you know what that is already. Um, and you can we'll get into that in the future. Uh, these little areas are all transformation and uh, different functions. So you'll see here we have trans the effects. The effect is up here. Uh, transformation allows you to adjust different things within the footage. So we have uh, like your anchor point, which is the center piece right here. Um, you can move that with, with this little tool, the pan behind tool. Um, that affects the rotation of, or the center of the object. So I put it on his eyeball and I start rotating him. It'll rotate around that eyeball, right? All right, so let's uh, Apple Z that. Apple Z, Apple Z, Apple Z, Apple Z, Apple Z. I don't know if I've done my 99 undos on this version of my After Effects, but anyway. Uh, position, of course, is the position that you're in. So if we go to my selection tool, we can move that around. You'll see the position updates down here in the bottom as I move that around. All right. Then you also have scale. That has to deal with the size of the footage. The link will allow you to distort it. Let's undo that. And then you also got rotation. You can rotate forward and back. And then opacity. Opacity is like, can you see through it or not? All right. Uh, another factor here is these are keyframes, these little stopwatches here. And you can click on, uh, let's say, the position. Click on it. Boop. And then you can move the object. Uh, oh, move the object there. There we go. So and if it follows it. OK. That's some fun times. Um, now in the layer or in the um, the panel itself in the uh, timeline panel, let me show you. This is the um, frame count. You can switch between uh, the different frame counts. Oops. You can click on it, and if you click on it, you can change the 
right? You can go to different frames. You can also do this. Let's see, if I remember what. The, there you go. If you, for uh, Macintosh, it's you hold it down to Apple and you click it, and it will change between frames and seconds and whatever that one plus 14 is. So here you go hours, minutes, frames, or seconds, frames. I'm always in frames because that's usually what I deal with. Um, next to that will be the search. So if you need to search for whatever is in the layer, you can do that. Um, you'll see here, this is your composition mini flowchart. Uh, there's a live update button. So it has to deal with, you can see the warning, makes it interactive faster, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, this happens to do your draft 3D. There's your shy. There's your frame blending. There's your motion blur. Uh, brainstorm, which I don't know anybody that uses. I, I never use it, but uh, I'm sure somebody does somewhere out there and they'll be mad that I didn't mention it. Um, then you also have your auto keyframe properties. So if you move something, it will automatically keyframe whatever you're working on. Uh, and then the graph editor, you click that and then you'll get a graph editor, which happens to deal with the curvature and motion of whatever you're, you're dealing with. So yeah, basically it's like a, a, a line that you can just kind of tweak and, and play around with. Um, if you grab this here, of course, it makes it bigger and smaller. Down here, you got the mountains. You can do the same thing. You got your little bar that you can move stuff around in. This is a marker. You can click this and you can drag it in and, and leave marks. All right. Um, this is your comp button brings forward the comp related to this window, of course. Boom. Let's see. All right. And then down here. Um, these happen to deal with all the different functions. I honestly leave a lot of this stuff off until I need it because I'm dealing with a lot of keyframes and uh, I want to be able to be organized and know where stuff is. So then when I, once I, I've entered something in, I kind of like, or have been, this is actually a good window to be in as well. Um, when I'm, compo when I'm compositing and I'm using like the tracking mats and everything, um, I use this window, but a lot of times I'm just turning it off and, and dealing with what I'm dealing with. So. Yeah, I hope uh, you enjoyed this. This was a, a fairly simple and basic tutorial rundown of uh, what the tools are within your uh, timeline panel. Uh, the next tutorial should be about the toolbar up in the upper left-hand corner. And uh, actually, we're going to probably go through each one individually, and those, those will probably be separate tutorials in themselves because each one of these does something completely different. So... Um, that is that. I am me and you are you and we will see you next time. All right. Peace.